namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa in the noble triple gem bless you all today we are going to start it another um, discussion so far that we have discussed a number of factors uh, about uh, the the enlightenment factors um, last week that we started to talk about the seven factors of enlightenment satta bodhanga and we did a small introduction to the seven factors of enlightenment as well so today we are going to discuss uh, what are the factors that uh, help to develop or improve the factors of enlightenment so let's see uh, what uh, what are those factors so the page number 161 how to develop the factors of enlightenment <coughs> the development of the factors of enlightenment is also to be done as practicing both serenity and insight practicing meditation is a way to practice the factors of enlightenment and practicing the factors of enlightenment is a way to practice meditation when there is no teacher to give the object for meditation kammatthana uh, should learn the object for meditation well even by any other way then having gone to a secluded place when time is proper for meditation secluded from sensual thoughts etc and keeping the mind on the object one should practice meditation during the specific time then the factor of enlightenment of mindfulness is developed that is how the factor of enlightenment of mindfulness is developed so practicing meditation is uh, the main uh, path or main method to develop the factors of enlightenment uh, developing the factors factors of enlightenment means practicing meditation and in order to do that uh, it is necessary to have a proper uh, guide or guidance um, if not someone should learn one should learn uh, the kammatthana or the object for the meditation so there are uh, uh, there are specific uh, personalities uh, for an example like raga charita uh, dvesha charita something like that in the visuddhi magga so uh, when you study those uh, personalities or the character types then you can choose uh, probably the best meditation method to develop the person who practices meditation in this manner if so desires to meditate uh, on the pa parts of the body like head hairs should contemplate well so that one understands the color and shape of them if doing another type of concentration meditation should contemplate on the object clearly as if it were seen through the eye if practice vipassana one should contemplate meditate well so that one could see physically and mentally as well as the characteristic of impermanence etc impermanence unsatisfactoriness and soullessness the practitioner who meditates to be more and more clear and clear the object 
uh, through that itself develops the factor of enlightenment of investigation of the Dhamma. That meditation is the development of the factor of enlightenment of the investigation of the Dhamma. For the person thus meditates will have to face many problems from time to time from cold, heat, hunger, thirst, mosquitoes and uh, get flies, etc. As well as physical problems, problems of, from enemies and some more other things as well. However, he must continue his meditation without giving up no matter whatsoever the problem arises. When practicing meditation in this manner without abandoning and um, without any hesitation, then the factor of enlightenment of energy is developed. That continuity of meditation without hesitation is a development of the factor of enlightenment of energy. When the practitioner practices meditation well, having established the mind on the object objects, the factor of enlightenment of mindfulness, understanding the object well as a factor of enlightenment of the investigation of the Dhamma with the great effort, without hesitation, as a factor of enlightenment of energy in him, arises rapture, which is unworldly. For that practitioner who practices meditation greatly, pleasing with the rapture, the factor of enlightenment of rapture is developed. Engaging meditation with that unworldly rapture is the development of the factor of enlightenment of rapture. Rapture means a piti. So according to this explanation, these factors of enlightenment, seven factors of enlightenment, uh, develops gradually as we've discussed so far uh, the first one is sati the mindfulness uh, when one develops the mindfulness uh, he can develop the factors of um, investigation of the dhammas which means uh, the dhamma which is sambhojjanga when he develops the Dhamma which is Sambhojjanga to be able to see in the factors as they are, uh, he can develop the Virya uh, energy. Then he develops Piti, the rapture. And like that, uh, it goes on uh, gradually as the uh, uh, meditation develops. It is the nature that even while meditating, Thoughts blended with defilements like restlessness that agitates the mind and mental states arise. It is because of the calmness of meditative mind of sensual sphere also becomes weak. Having aroused rapture, if the practitioner practices with rapture from time to time, the, the arisen of the uh, defiled minds like restlessness is also reduced. With that practitioner's mind and mental states are pacified and calmed to the state of supreme bliss of coolness. Because of their virtues, even the body becomes pacified and come to the state of coolness. The whole body feels easiness. Having maintained that pacified mind engaged in meditation is the development of the factor of enlightenment of tranquility. As the Buddha said, whosoever has tranquility in body has happiness in mind and the mind that is happy becomes concentrated. Pasadda kāyasa sutino chittan samādhiyati the practitioner who practices medit meditation with pacified mind and body because of uh, that happiness experiences more powerful concentration than ever, than ever before. For that practitioner who meditates through that concentration, concentration is developed. Engage in meditation 
and having established concentration based on mental and physical happiness is a development of the factor of enlightenment of concentration. Obtaining that concentration at the beginning itself is a development of the factor of enlightenment of concentration. For the practitioner who is engaged in meditation, if the factor of enlightenment of mindfulness is weak, the mind starts to slip from the meditative object. Being mindful, he becomes tired. If the factor of uh, enlightenment of the investigation of the Dhamma becomes weak, uh, though the mind is well fixed on the object, the object cannot be understood. The object is not clear. When make effort to practice in order to make clearer the object beca because of tiredness, it is difficult to meditate. When the factor of enlightenment of energy is weak, laziness and sleepiness arises and it becomes an obstacle for meditation. When the factor of enlightenment of energy is quite intensive, then arises restlessness and obstruct for the meditation. When the factor of enlightenment of rapture is insignificant, the en enthusiasm of practicing meditation becomes insignificant. When it is intense, restlessness arises and shakes the mind. When the factor of enlightenment of tranquility is weak, because of the oppression of the body and mind, it becomes an obstacle for meditation. When it becomes intense laziness, arises in and becomes an obstacle for meditation. When the factor of enlightenment of concentration is weak, the restlessness is present. The mind starts to shake. When it is intense, laziness and sleepiness arises and becomes an obstacle for meditation. It takes a long time for practice in order to adjust his or her uh, inequality of the factors of enlightenment and putting them into equality. Practicing meditation in order to keep equality of the factors of enlightenment is the development of the factor of enlightenment of equanimity. If the factor of uh, enlightenment of equanimity, which brings all factors of enlightenment into equality through power is developed. It is not necessary to make effort to any adjustment of meditation. Then as if it is involuntarily, meditation is going on well, where it has reached up to that point, maintaining it as it is and engage in meditation is the development of the factor of enlightenment of equanimity. So what we've discussed so far is <coughs> uh, how uh, each of uh, the factors of enlightenment supports to uh, the next one. And like uh, the gradually it develops and after developing these uh, factors of enlightenment, what uh, is the last factor of enlightenment, which is equanimity, Upekka Sambhojangadas, is to maintain the equality of the uh, all the uh, factors of enlightenment, and it happens when the meditation uh, is going well. Among the factors of enlightenment, the function of the factor of enlightenment of the mindfulness is controlling the mind and preventing it going out from the object and we've discussed this uh, before as well um, that's what the sati or the mindfulness does uh, preventing the mind uh, falling to the unwholesome uh, things the function of the factor of enlightenment of the investigation of the dhamma is manifesting the object so uh, in investigation of the dhamma means the panya uh, the panya, um, the factor of enlightenment, has the ability to see the objects as they are. <coughs> uh, they are uh, the characteristics, as we discuss uh, the impermanence and uh, suffering or the 
unsatisfactoriness and uh, non-self nature. The function of the factor of enlightenment of energy is supporting the mind to carry on meditation without abandoning. The function of the factor of enlightenment of rapture is pleasing the mind in the practice of meditation. The function of the factor of enlightenment of tranquility is a pacification of the oppression of the body and mind, which is called Pasaddi Sambhujjhanga. The function of uh, the factor of enlightenment of concentration is the unshaken establishment of the mind on the meditation object. <laughs> the function of the factor of enlightenment of equanimity is bringing the factors of enlightenment to the state of equilibrium which means the balance, all the seven factors of enlightenment uh, into um, balance. <clears throat> when all the factors of enlightenment are well developed and come to the state of equilibrium, the practitioner receives a greater happiness and rapture than the universal king, the monarch who enjoys happiness and uh, rapture being the ruler over the whole earth and having the seven kinds of gems, namely the gem of wheel, the gem of elephant, the gem of horse, the gem of wife, the gem of gem, the gem of household and gem of counsellor. By the time the taste of the factors of enlightenment is certainly very high, that is why the Buddha said, the taste of Dhamma excels all other tastes. Sabbam rasang Dhamma raso jinati. The monk who has retired to a solitary abode and calmed his mind, who comprehends the Dhamma with insight, in him there arises a delight that transcends all human delights. Sunyagaram pavittasa santa chittasa bhikkuno amanusi rati hoti samma dhamma nipasato. So, in the sensual realm, human realm, the most, uh, I mean, the greatest sensual happiness uh, gets uh, by the, the universal monarch, Chakravati uh, Raja. But uh, those who develop these uh, factors of enlightenment to a certain degree that he, in, he can enjoy um, the greater bliss, uh, which is called here <coughs> um, yes, delight that transcends all human uh, delights. Amanusi rati, that's what uh, the exact word in Pali, amanusi rati, non-human um, happiness or something like that. The Buddha said uh, this in order to reiterate happiness and rapture that is experienced by the practitioners at that time. So when these uh, factors of enlightenment developed, and then that particular person can enjoy uh, the greater bliss. <clears throat> the causes for the arising of the factor of enlightenment of mindfulness. Now we are going to discuss the causes, necessary uh, conditions to develop the factors of mindfulness. Monks, just as this body sustained by nutriment subsists in dependence on nutriment and does not subsist without nutriment, so too the seven factors of enlightenment sustained by nutriment subsist in dependence on nutriment and do not subsist without nutriment. And what monks is a nutriment for the arising of the unarising enlightenment? factor of mindfulness 
and for the fulfillment by development of the horizon enlightenment factor of mindfulness. There are amongst things that are the basis of the enlightenment of factor of mindfulness. Frequently giving careful attention to, the, uh, to them is a nutriment for the arising of the unarising enlightenment factor of mindfulness and for the fulfillment by development of the arising enlightenment factor of mindfulness. This is a Pali uh, chapter. The shows, uh, this shows us that uh, frequent contemplation of, of the causes of the factors of enlightenment of mindfulness with wise attention is a cause for the arising and developing of the factor of enlightenment of mindfulness. Here the wise attention means uh, the yoniso manasikara contemplating in a right way. Uh, in the commentary it is said there are mindfulness itself is the cause, is the cause of the factor of enlightenment of mindfulness. Tatta satyeva satisambhujjhangatahaniya dhamma So the practicing mindfulness is itself uh, a factor to develop the mindfulness. It is because of mindfulness the memory that arose at one time about a particular object that is reminded later. What is called memorizing is also nothing but recollection of things again and again. Memory or recollection means gaining the power of the ability to recollect what was memorized by that power of memorizing. Through this uh, pact it can be understood that the main cause for the arising of mindfulness later is a mindfulness that was arisen earlier. Wise attention about that hmm? <coughs> mindfulness means contemplation upon the benefits of mindfulness and the danger of mindfulness like mindfulness is something to be maintained all the time. Unmindfulness is a great failure. Unmindful one cannot attain Nibbana. So the wise attention, need, uh, the practicing mindfulness is itself uh, a factor or reason to develop uh, the mindfulness. And then wise attention, the yoniso manasikara is also one of the main uh, reasons or the factors to develop mindfulness. Then uh, contemplating the benefits of mindfulness and the danger of unmindfulness. So the developing mindfulness is vital in the practice of the Buddhist spirituality. Uh, without uh, sati, as it says here, um, one cannot attain uh, the Nibbana. In the commentary also, there are four factors for the factor of enlightenment of mindfulness. They are as follows. Mindfulness and clear comprehension. Avoiding the persons who are unmindful. Association with the persons who are mindful. Having mind leaning, sloping and slanting towards the factor of enlightenment of mindfulness. Chattaro dhamma satisambhajjhangasa uppadaya samvattati. Samvattanti. Satisambhajanyam. Mutta sati. Mutta sati puggala parivajjanata. Pattita sati puggala sevanata. Tadadi mutta. Those are the four factors as mentioned before. What is the call? What is called the factor of enlightenment is mindfulness with full comprehension. Mindfulness without clear comprehension is weak. That mindfulness is good only for the type of weak mindfulness but not skill enough to produce strong mindfulness at which is skillful to produce the enlightenment. It is only mindfulness with clear comprehension that is skillful 
enough to produce strong and great mindfulness of factor of enlightenment. Therefore, mindfulness with clear comprehension is shown as a cause for the factor of enlightenment of mindfulness. Those who are crazy and down for the count are normally called unconscious or unmindful in the world. According to the dispensation of the Buddha, unconscious or unmindful ones are not only them. Those who are greedily attached to wealth and properties, wife and children, indulge in sensual gratification, refraining from doing wholesome deeds and engage in committing unwholesome deeds are also considered as unconscious or unmindful. So that is a very interesting point as uh, general people, general public believes uh, the unmindful people is sort of like crazy uh, people, but here, as it explains, it's not so. Those who have completely forgotten about uh, the wholesome or the spiritual practices and engage in sensual uh, desires or sensual gratification is also considered as unmindful or unconscious. There is a nature of spreading out ideas through association. Associating with the persons who are highly engrossed in sensual pleasures and doing unwholesome deeds, such ideas can be spread out easily. And then other persons also fall into the same status. Therefore, avoiding such persons as well as associating the persons who are away always mindful and refraining uh, from unwholesome things is a cause for the development of the factor of enlightenment of mindfulness. So in the teachings of the Buddha, as we all know, he always encourages uh, to not to associate fools or um, the people <coughs> who do not engaged in wholesome practices because uh, it doesn't matter how long that we practice uh, the wholesome or the good qualities it takes a very small amount of time to uh, fall into danger so that is why the Buddha always encouraged uh, to not to associate uh, the foolish people or those who do not engage in spiritual practices because those uh, uh, people have some influence, can have some influence, influence to uh, change because our, the, the nature of our minds is always to lean to unwholesome. So it is easy to fall to unwholesome practices. So that is why uh, it needs to avoid those sort of people and uh, try to associate as much as possible to with those who practice the mindfulness and all the spiritual qualities. Uh, their influence is uh, important in the uh, practice of the spirituality. <clears throat> uh, so the last one is uh, was called Tadadi Muttata. So the whatever you do, um, it should be helpful to develop uh, the sati uh, always whatever we think whatever we speak whatever we do or act through the body uh, we have to contemplate whether this is going to uh, helpful to develop sati or not uh, that is why it is called tadadi muttata always engage always lean uh, or submerge into to develop this, uh, the factor of enlightenment of mindfulness, sati sambodhyanga. So those are the factors to develop uh, sati sambodhyanga. So as we discuss uh, the yoniso manasikara, the wise attention and practicing mindfulness meditation. Uh, is also a factor to develop mindfulness 
and contemplate the uh, the advantages or the benefits of developing mindfulness and uh, contemplate the uh, the danger of unmindfulness and uh, practicing <coughs> the mindfulness and clear comprehension uh, having the uh, the correct understanding about the mindfulness then the avoid the persons who are unmindful and associate the people who are mindful and always um, have the right mindset to develop the sati or the um, enlightenment of a factor of enlightenment of mindfulness sati sambodhyanga so those are the factors that we discuss so the next one the cause the causes for the arising of the factor of enlightenment of the investigation of the dhamma so um, anything to be clarified uh, about what we've discussed so far no but i think it's okay okay then let's move on <clears throat> uh, there are monks unwholesome and um, wholesome and unwholesome states blameable and blameless states inferior and superior states dark and bright states frequently giving careful attention to them is the nutriment for the arising of the unarising enlightenment factor of the investigation of the dhamma and for the fulfillment by development of the un, uh, the arising enlightenment factor of investigation of the dhamma so simply what uh, here means to um, to contemplate about uh, wholesome and unwholesome the all other uh, the words are quite uh, similar or the uh, synonyms like blameable and blameless inferior and superior dark and bright all uh, about uh, the wholesome and unwholesome so um, it is must to have a uh, understanding a proper understanding about what are the wholesome and what are the unwholesome what are the roots for wholesome and what are the roots for unwholesome and uh, how we can avoid them uh, and having that understanding is important uh, to improve or develop the enlightenment of the fa uh, factor of enlightenment of the investigation of the dhamma uh, which means the dhamma which is sambuddhanga <coughs> According to this passage, contemplation upon unwholesome and wholesome with wise attention, like unwholesome is a cause of cause for suffering, wholesome is a cause to be free from suffering, and the gain of happiness. Unwholesome leads beings to hell, and wholesome leads to heaven. Is a cause for the factor of enlightenment or investigation of the Dhamma. There are seven factors for the factor of enlightenment of investigation of the Dhamma in accordance with the commentary. They are as follows. So, uh, as mentioned above, uh, to understanding or to contemplation about wholesome and unwholesome uh, with wise attention uh, is uh, one of the main factors to help to develop to, or to improve this uh, particular buddhanga uh, dhamma which is sambuddhanga so there are seven factors in the commentaries in the atua uh, to develop this uh, buddhanga number one questioning about the aggregates etc purity of both things internal and external equilibrium of the fac uh, faculties like confidence avoiding unwise persons associating with wise persons reflecting upon the exposition of wisdom on profound aggregates etc leaning sloping and slanting the mind towards the factors of enlightenment of investigation of the 
ಧಮ್ಮ ಸೊ ದ ಇಂಟರಗೇಷನ್ ಇನ್ ರೆಸ್ಪಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಪ್ರಫೌಂಡ್ ಧಮ್ ಸಚ್ ಆಸ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಗೇಟ್ಸ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಬೆಸ್ಟ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರಾಟಜಿ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಡೆವಲಪ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಅಲ್ಟಿಮೇಟ್ ಗೋಲ್ಸ್ for those who do no uh, do so as they have to contemplate upon such things and make effort to teach in various ways to others what they know their knowledge is developed therefore from that arises and develops wisdom that is conducive to enlightenment as a factor of enlightenment of the investigation of the dhamma so um it is very important to <clears throat> uh understand these uh, the dhammas in the teachings of the buddha that we know there are uh, so many or oh, number of uh, categorization of the ultimate realities a uh, number of methods so learning them and try to understanding understand them is and um, one of the main reason to develop this particular bodjang so as mentioned here uh, to contemplate uh, about the aggregates and questioning about the aggregates we know there are five aggregates and learn about these aggregates and how they uh, appear and how they work and what are their uh, characteristics uh, so the learning about them uh, is important and we know that there are some other uh, ways of um, other methods of uh, explaining the ultimate realities for an example like 12 sense basis ayatna dolus ayatna and 18 um, elements attars uh, dahatu and 22 faculties and four noble truths and dependent origination patita samuppada like that there are so many uh, or number of ways of methods of um, analyzing or explaining about these ultimate realities so learning them and contemplating about them and questioning about them and teaching them whatever you know you can share your knowledge with others it is also one of the um sappurisa dhammas whatever you have learned you can share with others uh, those who you associate with and um, those uh, methods that uh, you can develop this um, particular sambodjanga dhamma which is sambodjanga then uh, purity of no so i want that second point purity of both things and internal and external what is that yes let's see what it is purity of both internal and external things here internal things means head face hands legs etc the external things means robes etc so simply about uh, your body and whatever you use as and surroundings um, that is what you call internal and external the practitioners should shave their heads uh, their be- and beards and cut their nails etc so it is about months when they are uh, grown and keep the body clean either daily or on the appropriate days should take shower and keep the whole body clean not only external body but also internal body needs to be cleaned by purging uh, from time to time one's use of artic- articles like the uh, bowl and robe should be kept clean the place where one lives around also needs to be kept clean when the lamp is lit with a clean lamp a clean wick and clean oil the light of the lamp is bright so too the knowledge that gains by the persons who is clean 
internally and externally is clear and clearer. It is opposite in the same, is the same. As the lamp is lit with impure lamp, impure wick and impure oil, the light of the lamp is gloomy. The knowledge of uh, knowledge that the person with internal and external impurity gains is also weak. The impure knowledge cannot produce the factor of enlightenment of the investigation of the Dhamma. It is possibly only through pure knowledge. The internal and external purity is said to be a cause for the arising of the factor of enlightenment of the investigation of the Dhamma because it is a cause for the arising of pure knowledge. Some practitioners with wrong understanding think that dirtiness is a part of meditation and they live with long hair and beards and use dirty robes and dwell at dirty places. Taking that as a part of meditation is a misunderstanding. Cleanliness itself is a part of the practitioner. One should not take cleanliness as adoration. Cleanliness is one thing and adoration is another. In the name of cleanliness, one should not strive to adorn either body or the dwelling place. Simplicity is the best thing for the practitioner. Everything should be kept clean, but not with adoration or decoration. I think it's clear, Mahindra Mahatma. Yes, Bhante, I think, yeah. Yes, thank you. Yes. Uh, so the third factor. If the spiritual faculty of confidence becomes more intense, then the spiritual faculty of energy cannot do the function of supporting The faculty of mindfulness cannot do the function of manifestation of the object. The faculty of concentration cannot do the function of the establishment of mindful uh, of mind on the object well. And the faculty of wisdom cannot see the object as it is. If all the spiritual faculties are not in function equally, one cannot gain the paths and fusions of Jahana. As the example for this, the story of when Vakkali should be cited. When the faculty of confidence is intense, the practitioner should drive it to the state of weakness, either by contemplating on the nature of the Dhamma or by refraining from thinking of the factors which develop confidence. If the faculty of energy becomes more intense, faculty of confidence cannot be accepted without doubt. The other faculties also cannot do their own respective functions as well. For an example, for that, the story of when Sona should be cited. Then the practitioner should weaken that intense faculty of energy by developing either the factor of enlightenment of tranquility or by refraining from thinking of factors which intense the faculty of energy. Of all faculties, if one becomes more powerful, other faculties cannot do their own functions well. Therefore, the practitioner should always make effort to keep the balance of the spiritual faculties, especially the balance of confidence and wisdom and concentration and energy is very much significant. The person with little with, uh, but great confidence might be a foolish devotee. He might be devoted to the place where one should not be devoted because of that he is declining. The person whose confidence is weak but wisdom is great might become a cunning person and would not be devoted to the place to be devoted and would not do any wholesome deeds. 
He is like a person who is afflicted by medicine. It is quite difficult to cure the illness afflicted by medicine itself. Likewise, it is difficult to put him to do good deeds. He thinks, uh, thinking itself is a meritorious deed. Therefore, he never does any good deeds and eventually ends up in the hell realm. When the both confidence and wisdom are in balance, the person who becomes devoted to the place to be devoted and never goes on the wrong path, but does good deeds, can be free from suffering and reaches the state of bliss. So, um, this explains about uh, the equality uh, of uh, these faculties. So, if it is not, as mentioned here, it's difficult to uh, develop concentration. So, the confidence and wisdom, saddha and panya, should be balanced. Uh, and then, uh, concentration and energy, uh, samadhi and virya, also should be uh, quite equal. So, as it mentions here, uh, ones who have confidence over uh, wisdom uh, is um, uh, please his mind where he should not be please his mind and those who have wisdom uh, than the confidence or wisdom is high that he becomes a um, cunning person would not perform meritorious deed just uh, may think, uh, thinking itself is meritorious, uh, something like that. <clears throat> so, as mentioned here, uh, they end up in hell. So, it is very important to maintain these uh, faculties quite equally, uh, which is support you to develop this particular bodhjanga, the dhamma which is some bodhjanga. If one's faculty of energy becomes weak and concentration becomes more powerful, since concentration is a conducive factor for laziness and sleepiness, um, his mind can easily become lazy and sleepy. On the other hand, if concentration becomes weak, but energy becomes more powerful, since energy is conducive to restlessness, his mind can easily become restless. Concentration when blended with energy, there is no space for the laziness and sleepiness to enter the mind. When concentration is balanced with energy, there is no space for restlessness too. Therefore, always the practitioners should have the intention of balancing both concentration and energy. Because system. having seen the truths, one attains paths and fruition. Having a great mindfulness is necessary for everyone, for all the time. That mindfulness protects the practitioner's mind from falling it into confidence. Energy and wisdom based on restlessness or to laziness through concentration based on laziness and sleepiness. Therefore, as every dish of curry needs salt, this mindfulness pertaining to all activities in meditation needs to be present at the beginning, in the middle, and at the end of the practice. So as uh, mentioned here, <laughs> among the five faculties, the sati mindfulness is always should be uh, more powerful and the uh, other four uh, factors of uh, the faculties should maintain uh, equally as we've discussed. <clears throat>
Avoiding unwise persons. So we are discussing the factors that helps that help to develop the Dhamma which is Sambhujanga, the factor of investigation of uh, the Dhammas. Avoiding unwise persons means avoiding those who have no knowledge of aggregates, etc. It is true that those who have knowledge of the aggregates, etc., are not common in the world. The world is filled with fools who do not know those things. Therefore, it is quite difficult for one to live entirely avoiding them. Avoiding here means minimizing association with them. Their ideas, opinions, talks and actions all are against the Dhamma. He who associates with them, lives with them, also has to heed them and that will be an obstacle for him for the gaining of the true knowledge. If they are not associated, it would not happen so. That is why it is said that avoiding those who are little wit, little wit is a cause for the factor of enlightenment of the investigation of the Dhamma. Uh, so, <clears throat> avoiding uh, unwise persons or those who do not have proper understanding about these, uh, the Dhammas uh, is one of the uh, factors or the reasons to develop this uh, Dhamma which is Sambhodhanga. When frequently associating with the wise, also wise who know the aggregates, and they are arising and passing, also, uh, and also listening to their talks, such persons also gain knowledge. That is why it is said that associating with the wise is a cause for the factor of enlightenment of the investigation of the Dhamma. So we know, or we all know that how. Uh, the good friends association is uh, influential in the in the spiritual practices. Uh, as once Venerable Ananda Thera asked from the Buddha, all this uh, dispensation is depend on. I mean, half of this dispensation depend on the Kalyana with the good friends. So what the Buddha said was that it's not so. All the uh, the dispensation, the Buddha Sasana, all the spiritual practice is depend on hundred percent depend on the Kalyana Mittas, the good friends, associating good friends. So it is also one of the factors to develop this particular uh, Bodhanga as well. The profound Dhamma, such as aggregates, are numerous. The kinds of knowledge pertaining to them are also numerous. As given in the Nidana Samyutta of the Samyutta Nikaya, there are the 44 kinds of the seven or the 77 kinds of knowledge. In accordance with the Patisambhita Magga, there are 73 profound knowledges, the jnanas. They are certain knowledges pertaining to the deep Dhamma. Those who think of these have to think of their pertaining Dhamma as well. Thus who seeks things and investigate. These knowledges also develops knowledge. Yes, uh, understanding or learning about these knowledges, jnanas, we know there are several number of types of jnanas as discussed here. Uh, learning them is also one of the factors to develop them. And is associating good friends that yes, it's difficult today, but if we can learn the biographies about those who have developed these uh, spiritual qualities like great arahantas, it'll, it'll be helpful to develop uh, these um, <coughs> spiritual qualities. So the last one is the Tadadimuttata, the always do or 
uh, activities uh, leaning to the mind to develop this uh, the bodjanga is also one of the factors to develop this dhamma which is sambodjanga the factor of enlightenment of investigation of the dhammas so um, yes these are the uh, factors that we discuss so far so anything to be discussed today more it's uh, interesting bante to uh, i didn't realize the importance of having the different qualities in balance because yes. uh, personally i try hard to concentrate but maybe that is has been the right approach but the, the here mind mahatma what we have to remember is keep it in our mind this is in certain level we when we develop these things um, but not at the beginning like these things are for like yoga which are those who practice meditation and develop these uh, factors to certain degrees so in the beginning um, i think that it's not much necessary to worry about that mm -hmm. because um, in the beginning whatever these qualities is important to go forward but in certain degree certain at the certain level uh, that we had to worry for an example like uh, theravakali and you uh, know about uh, the story of the venerable vakali um, no one and so that the vakali the venerable monk uh, had developed Uh, the sadha too much so he always wanted to look at the buddha um, and then what the buddha said was uh, it's not important to looking at this body what you had to do is uh, practice meditation mm -hmm. and um, how much that he had the sadha towards the buddha uh, it says that then he was so upset and he was also uh, thinking about to you know end his life Mm -hmm. uh, and he went up to a mountain and he was about to jump <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. down the mountain so then the buddha saw that and he um somehow preached the dhamma and at the end that he was able to attain higher you know enlightenments uh, so <clears throat> in uh, that type of um, the higher uh, degree of uh, these qualities uh, has to reduce uh, the other example of venerable sona uh, that he was as i remember he was a royal prince uh, and i know he was a musician actually before so he practiced uh, uh, the spiritual deity or the meditation uh, tirelessly uh, then solving that the buddha uh, gave him some sort of like analogy that explaining what happens um, when he plays uh, the instrument i think like violin or something mm -hmm. um, what happens the strings are too much tight uh, or too much loose mm. as he can't get the the proper tune right. um, yes explaining that he buddha advised him to maintain proper um, uh, way of or the midway of uh, energy or the virya at mm -hmm. the end that he was able to attain uh, the higher versions so like that these are uh, it's very important to know about them um, and uh, in this state of uh, balance we need in sort of higher a uh, state of uh, the development of these factors <clears throat> mm. thank you bhat yes so i think um, we can discuss the next factor in the next time because we discuss two factors and quite a bunch of now, uh, factors to develop uh, these factors of enlightenment Uh, so what do you think
Actually, I think uh, next uh, next week uh, next week I will not uh, conduct the session. After that week, uh, I will uh, start or the conduct the session. So keep it in your mind. Uh, next week, I will not uh, conduct this uh, Dhamma session. So after that week, uh, next week I will um, do the next uh, session. <clears throat> Mahindamate, were you about to yes. say something? No, that, that's okay, Bhante, yes. Yes. So then uh, let's uh, wind up today our Dhamma discussion. So I, I appreciate the, everyone, those who join to learn this noble Dhamma. And today, <clears throat> uh, by discussing this uh, noble Dhamma, that we all generated enormous uh, amounts of meritorious thoughts in our hearts, so let's transfer, let's the, uh, share these merits uh, with our departed relatives. Idami nyati nanghu tu sukita huntu nyatayo. Idami nyati nanghu tu sukita huntu nyatayo. Idami nyati nanghu tu. Sukita Huntunyatayo. Let's share the merits with the divine beings as well. May all the deities accept these merits and may protect all of us. Ittavata cha amhehi sambhatang punya sampadang sabbe deva anumodantu sabbe sampati siddhya it. Bhavata charam he he sambhatang punya sampadang sabbi deva anumodan tu sabbe sampati siddhya bhavata charam he he sambhatang punya sampadang sabbi deva anumodan tu sabbe sampati May all these merits lead us to supreme bliss of Nibbana, Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Much merit to you, Bhante. Thank you. Thank you. Lots of merits to you, Bhante Teruan Saranai. Teruan Saranai.